What's up guys, it's your boy Spacelab105 and welcome back to another speculation video and today we're going to speculate about the third DLC in Total War Warhammer 3's roadmap. And if you guys didn't know back then, we all thought it was going to be a Slanesh DLC, but no. The third DLC is going to focus on corn, ogres, and greenskins. And this time we're back with, once again, the Raw Dude! Hey, hey, The Raw Dude here. Glad to be back. Let's get the show on the road, shall we? Yes, sir. So to kick things off, CA announced a few days ago how the next DLC is going to have corn, ogres, and greenskins rather than Slanesh as we thought about, what, a year ago from now? Yeah, but, uh, and again, we have no idea how this DLC is going to work. I'm assuming it's going to be similar to Thrones of Decay with this current thing of three legendary lords, three legendary heroes, three lords, three heroes, five units, three regiments of renown, and one free OC character. But that's not exactly guaranteed. So we're just going off the assumption of this DLC format as we had on the previous one. So let us begin. So why don't we start things off with the Blood God's minions from himself, Korn. So some potential legendary lords that I thought about here, along with some other speculations I've looked at, are Arbald the Undefeated, Uzul Skulltaker, and Scar Bloodwrap. However, I think that Arbald the Undefeated is the most likely because he's unique in that he rides a gigantic flesh hound. He's definitely one of the more famous of Korn's characters on tabletop and in lore in general. And plus, Uzul Skulltaker, I think is more likely gonna be an FLC character similar to Epidemius. And Star Bloodrat, he's involved with some of the units in this roster, but I'm not sure if he's like famous enough as Arbal the Undefeated. Maybe later down the line, who knows. What's the lore behind Star Bloodrat? I think with Star Bloodrat, he's an AOS character technically, Age of Sigmar. And if I recall, I think he's just a guy who's so angry that he just refuses to die. Really? No, I'm serious. Wow, what a man. Moving on to potential legendary hero, there's really only one that I could think about for porn, and that is Sila Enfengrim. Hopefully I pronounced them correctly. What? He is this champion back in Norska who got so many boons from Korn that he mutated into what is kind of a chaos spawn, but is more like a roided out red angry gorilla, really. And this guy, I think, would be very similar to, um, uh, what was his name? Gorich, I think. Similar in legendary hero status to that, is my guess. Maybe a little bit bigger. Now on to the lore types. Now for Korn, this one was really tough because honestly, he already has his uh, lore types being the melee like lore type because he has no magic of any kind, really. So uh, I went to AOS for some sort of like, you know, uh, inspiration. And one that I found is one called a Blood Secrator. But think about it similar to some kind of blood or slaughter priest. Think of it like an Arch Elector for Korn, where he doesn't do magic, but he gives chance or boons, really, rather than being pure brutal melee, is my guess. Yeah, I was thinking sort of like a, rather than being pure melee, brutal guy, could be more of a buffer. Similar to the, uh, what was the name? The Strategist from Cathay, I think, where he's all about buffing your army. Except this guy could actually have boons that you activate, similar to Warrior Priests or Arch Electors. Two other options I thought about for the, uh, Lord types, although these are a little less like unlikely, is my guess, is either the Doom Bow of Corn or the Beast Lord of Corn, aka just the Beastman generals, but Corn style. But do we have like a Great Grey Shaman of Zinch? Well, I mean, I think there is kind of, but that's the Age of Sigmar thing with the Beak uh, Beastman. I mean, sure, if they could go with that route of almost a God touched Beastman Lords, or similar to how Warriors of Chaos already work. Where you start off normal and then you can dedicate to one particular god when they gain that experience. Alright, so for hero types, again, this is from Age of Sigmar, but um, since there isn't really any other hero types from old Warhammer Fantasy, I thought about maybe the Slaughter Priest from Age of Sigmar. Again, similar to the guy for the Lord, but it's just a priest or shaman, whatever, that does chants and buffs for your army. And the second option is maybe a Gorble of Corn or a War Gore of Corn. Like I said, it's sort of up in the air when it comes to corn, hero, and lore type since we already have what is needed in the base game already. Unless they do it for like a big, big end times DLC as the final chaos thing ever. Oh uh, yes, the end time. I don't know if TA are going to do that because Warhammer Fantasy had like two separate endings. One, where obviously the end times where chaos destroys everything and the whole world is destroyed. And the other one is just a storm of chaos where Grimgore saves the day. 
Yeah, I think CIA has talked about how it's not going to be end times because of how like frightened people are from how terrible the story was. But when it comes to units, I think they'll definitely come in, especially if they're cool and good units to add into the game. So here's my idea. Just add the end times units and other stuff, but keep the sending of Warhammer 3 just the storm of chaos. That's it. Or just leave it as a sandbox. Or an end game crisis, maybe. Yeah, it's weird how we have all those late game stuff with dwarves, green skins. I think Skaven has been added recently in Chaos Dwarves, but still nothing on Chaos itself. My guess is that maybe that end times DLC is going to add that in as a patch. Let's hope we survive that. I don't do those things. I don't find it very fun, to be honest. You wait the end game crisis? Yeah, I don't see the appeal of that, really. Oh. Okay. All right, so for units, I try to think of several options, but we're assuming it's with the standard, like, five units. And thankfully, I think I found five that could perfectly fit Korn. First two are some end time uh, units. First are the Wrathmongers. Think of it similar to the Doom Seekers for the dwarves, but man sized and corn based. And of course, a cornate version of Kratos himself. Yeah. Okay. All right, the next one are the Skull Reapers, which are pretty much the aspiring champions of corn that can wield great weapons, or I think dual wield great weapons, depends how CA wants to do it, and are just a small unit but are completely brutal. All right, so the next one that I think is definitely a guarantee are corn gores. I mean, simple bot standard gores devoted to corn. I mean, we got zinch gores and pesta gores. And if they want to add more units, why not two variants of corn gores? Like one with axes and shields and the other with great weapons. You know, like the Plague Ogres from Thrones of Decay. I mean, they could do that, but I imagine that they're going to go with dual wielding for Corn Gores since the Pesticores already have great weapons. Also, why haven't they added the Corn Bulls to the Beastmen roster yet? Well, I think they're going to add that once this DLC comes out as part of the patch, is my guess. Because I would love to have those Corn Minotaurs for Torox's army. All right, so the next unit I was thinking about is perhaps a Chariot of Corn that is pulled by a Juggernaut. As there is a tabletop model for it, although it's pulled by Beastmen, so it could be either Beastmen or Warriors of Corn. And there was also like artwork of it that was uh, thought about back in the design of Warhammer 3 before it was launched. Instead, they just replace it with the Gore Beast. Yeah, so that could perhaps be an upgrade for it in the Warriors of Chaos, like, uh, you know, Warband uh, system. Personally, I'm not a fan of Chariots myself, but I'm sure that a lot of people would have fun with this one if it's added in. All right, now moving on to the hopefully centerpiece unit of this one, the Slaughter Breach. Imagine it almost like a Chaos Spawn, or actually similar to the Mutilith Vortex Beast, but completely mutated for corn, where it's supposed to be a mindless, bloodthirsty brute just going about smashing everything friend and foe alike. And I hope Green Assembly adds Wall Breaker to this beast right here. Wall Breaker? I'm not so sure. It's not as big as, say, a giant. But it is supposed to be, I think, as big as the Mutant of the Vortex Beast. So we'll see what they do with it. I can imagine they could add a Rampage to it in order to make it, like, flavorful. All right, so moving on to the Ogres. Again, like, there are some difficulties with this one since the majority of the roster is already in the game, but there are some that I think has a chance of coming in, and some that I really had to pull from weird sources. So, for potential legendary lords, one of the potential ones is Goldfag Maneater, one of the most famous ogres, one that's highly requested, the Maneater mercenary guy himself, and if I recall, I think it was leaked that there is actually a model of him that's going to be put into the game sometime soon. So with the ogres coming in, I really hope they do a rework on ogres as a whole in regards to how their meat works, in regards to how camps work, and especially with the mercenary contract system, and how you recruit ogre mercenaries as well. The way they did Warhammer 2, I think is superior to how it currently is in Warhammer 3, as it is very limiting with only ogre bowls being available once, and you have to get directly from the camps, and those camps always raid your territory, so it's never worth it. So, sub rant over. Another one, although not as likely, is Gark Ironskin, which we talked about in previously. The thing about Gark Ironskin is that he's the leader of the Ironskin tribe, whose whole obsession is about metal, like being perhaps the second or third great substance. First being meat, obviously, gold probably being as important as iron. His stick is that once he was facing against a Bretonian crusade that was coming to his lands, the way he beat the army is Rhinox unfortunately got impaled several times by Bretonian lances. And uh, good thing is that Gark was actually pretty good friends with some Chaos Wars as he traded Noblar slaves for uh, food or vice versa, it depends. And uh, they actually rewarded him with a mechanical Rhinox that has the soul of a demon trapped in it. So if he comes to the game, I can imagine him completely buffing like Morphine 
or especially Rhinox Riders. And perhaps as a faction-wide bonus, so just adding more armor to all units in your faction. And also extra diplomatic relationships with the Chaos Dwarfs. Yeah, and maybe like a subtle decrease against Bretonians. All right, so those are the two potential legendary characters. Let us know if you find anyone else or if you think it's anyone else, but those are the main two. But potential legendary hero, there's really only one that I could think about as he has an actual model, and that is Brag the Gutsman. So he's a special ogre. He doesn't exactly lead any tribe. He sort of wanders around because every ogre is terrified to death of him. It's because of the weapon that he has, which he actually invented. I forget what it's called, but it's this giant hook that is especially designed to go past the ogre gut plate and go underneath it and completely rip open an ogre's stomach. Damn! Which is the most terrifying thing for any ogre alive. This guy is messed up in the head. Like, if you thought Scrag was crazy, this guy is completely grim and just not mental, but scary. If you watch Puss in Boots The Last Wish, he's basically the ogre version of death himself. Or as scary as it really. Yeah. I can imagine that his uh, weapon here, I forget the name of it, but it could have a bunch of anti-large potential since it's designed to take down stuff as big as ogres. All right, moving on to the Lord type. Again, this one's pretty hard because when it comes to the ogres, their Lord types from the tabletop are already in there with the ogre tyrant and the slaughter priest. So when it came to it, I thought, okay, where are some things, especially like if it's Gofag or other people, what could be some Lord options? I thought, oh, the Ogre Hunter is in, so why not an Ogre Hunter Lord of some kind with a unique design that could buff up all your beasties? Or if it's Gofag Mania coming in, then one other option that I saw in a speculation on Reddit is perhaps maybe a Lord version of a Maneater, perhaps like a Maneater Treasurer or just Captain of some kind could be interesting. Now, when it comes to hero types, there's really only one option. That's the Ogre Bruiser, who is still not yet in the game. It's just a hero version of a tyrant, really, a complete beat stick of a guy. And plus, maybe with this DLC, they could add in mount options for both the bruiser and the tyrant. As I recall, I think Loremaster Sotek or Great Book of Grudges said this, that the tyrants could actually be put on a Mornfang or a Rhinox on tabletop. Or perhaps a monster that I added onto this list that we'll get to. Now, when it comes to the units for the ogres, again, there are several options I was thinking about. So I was thinking, are there any Noblar units that could be on there? And there are really two interesting ones I thought about, although one of them is kind of weird. There's the Pigback Riders, which is just Noblar on top of Noblar Warriors, <laughs> really. Yeah. Which is a silly unit, but I mean, might as well have fun with it if you can. Or the one that I'm hoping for, the Noblar Man Biters, which are the toughest of the Noblar units. Not saying a lot, but it's perhaps just a tougher chassis unit, really. All right, moving on to real units, mind you. If Man Eater does come in, then CA, please, please redo how Man Eaters actually are in the game. We want more varieties, but we want it based on like nationality where they fought. Example, the one from the Empire, which could be like Holy or Great Weapons. One that could be from Cathay or Nippon, which are ninja ogres that could sneak around with Vanguard and Poison. One from Araby, maybe, so they could actually, like, maybe have some shields or some other unique stuff gimmicks, or one from Doors, one from Greenskins. We just want man eaters that are actually unique, please. Was there a man eater type for Chaos? Uh, I guess that counts more of a Chaos Ogres, which I didn't add to this list, but that could be like a free LC thing to add. Since Miracle has Plague Ogres, why not Chaos Ogres for Corn, Zinch, Lanesh, and Undivided? Sure, but they would have to look unique now, right? Like, yeah. especially if we do Chaos Ogres of Corn, I can imagine them being like red with some red armor. But I'm curious to see how that would go like Ogres for Zinch and even for Slanesh. That's a bit on the odd side. All right, so next unit up ahead, and this is one I'm not entirely sure will be in the DLC, unlike the next two units, but potentially Blood Vault. Now, Blood Vultures are pets or sometimes used by Ogre Hunters in order to scout ahead and find their prey. And I thought, what about a certain unit of just flying vultures? Kind of weak, but similar to the Carrion for the Tomb Case. Wait, do Ogres create bonds? I honestly do not know. Well, I'm guessing that they don't create bonds, maybe they take them from trade or conquest. Can you imagine Blood Vultures that can drop, like, boulders or bombs? You mean just like the flock of Jaff and the Tomb Kings? I mean, that could be unique or perhaps a Regiment Renown if they want to do that. Now, next unit is one that I definitely want, especially the community wants, especially since it's a certain theme, the Yetzis. Now, I can imagine these being similar to the Gorgers where they are fast, maybe not as tanky, but the whole point is that they are fast, can go around, can hit hard, and provide frostbite to your army. In fact, do you know the lore behind the Yetis? What's their lore? These actually used to be ogres at one point. 
Wait, really? So you know the lore of the ogres, how when the Dragon Emperor called that comment on their original homeland because they were raiding and eating people, how they were moved to the Mountains of Moor, they went west and they fought the Sky Titans? Yeah. Yeah, well, um, once the Sky Titans were completely exterminated, the ogres realized that the food was out and most of them left, but some decided to stay at the very tips of those Sky Titan peaks. Unfortunately, there was a bunch of warp stone around there, so that mixed with the cold mutated them into these savage, furry, uh, cold-based creatures. So the same gemstones that the Skaven are obsessed with turn these ogres into the abominable snowmen. Yeah, and in fact, in lore, some tyrants have a specific horn at their camps, and if needed, they would blow that horn and the yetis would come tumbling down from the mountain to help out in exchange for a free meal. All right, and then last unit, which is definitely going to be the centerpiece and should come into it, as since they're a tabletop model, is the Thunder Tusk, yes. a great big behemoth that can just completely blast ice at enemies in its direction. Blast ice? I don't know they can do that. Yeah, they have like a frost breath. Now, I don't know if that's going to translate into game, but I can imagine frostbite and especially a frost aura of some kind to slow enemies down. And plus, do you know that that comet that came down from the Dragon Emperor eventually became the Great Maw, right? Wait, that's how the Great Maw came to exist? Yeah, it came down, crashed, made a giant hole in there, killed like, what was it, 70 or 80% of the ogre population. One guy, I forget his name, it was something One Finger, the prophet, went to the hole where the crash site. He saw a giant place, a giant hole, and when he looked down, he saw nothing but gnawing teeth. And he went back to his ogre tribe and spread the word about this new deity that was formed. So you're telling me that the dragon emperor accidentally created the deity the ogres worship from his massive meteor? Accidentally. If I recall, I think the combo was made of warp stone. When it crashed down, of course, we know warp stone is chaotic in energy. And when the ogres like were ravaged by hunger and their belief was made by that hunger, it then formed that god that way, the Great Maw. Because remember, like when it comes to Warhammer Fantasy, especially if you believe in something or if enough people do, it will manifest into some sort of like deity or some sort of magical power. All right, now moving on to the lads, the greenskins, the boys. So there is a lot that is missing from the greenskins, but nothing necessary. I'll say that nothing necessary, but there is a bunch missing because it's mostly down to unit variants. But there are some unique units that could be added to this one here. So starting off with potential legendary lords, there are a few options. One that I've seen that's really popular is Gorbad Ironclaw, one of the most successful orc war bosses in the world. Aside from Grigor, of course. Now, the thing about Gorbat Ironclaw is that he actually started in the Badlands conquering Black Crag. Then he started his massive war, in which he actually went straight into the Empire. And in fact, you remember where Balthazar Gelt started in the province of Solent? Yeah, Gorbat Ironclaw's wall was so successful, he burned Solent to the ground, and he burned it so bad that the Empire just decided that Solent was no more. In fact, he actually, I think he killed the Emperor of the time, and was about to siege and raise Altdorf to the ground, until like some Dwarven allies came to help out the Empire, and then had his army completely routed. So with this guy, I can imagine that maybe he could focus a lot on cavalry, especially with his uh, unique Four mount. Basically an orc version of Genghis Khan. Yeah, because the thing about this guy is that he was a brutal orc, but he was also cunning as well. Maybe not as smart as Azag when he has the crown, but close to it. Which is why he had the uh, either the most or second most successful wall in Greenskin history. With maybe Grand the Paunch being better since he's the only one to ever go to Ult One. And to make things even more interesting, Grom's a literal goblin. The first goblin to ever make the biggest wah in history. Yeah, which I bet shocked every orc in existence. I know, right? Can you imagine how Grom's conquests and his mighty wah inspire other goblins to strive to be the best? I think one of them could be Skarsnik. Yeah, it makes me wonder if Skarsnik is legit like a Grom fanboy or not. So next potential legendary character for this DLC, if it's not Gorbat Ironclaw, how about Gorfang Rotgut? Especially since he's been in the game since I believe Warhammer 1. Yeah, and make him look like the one in the tabletop. Yeah, don't make him look generic, make him actually unique. As if Gringor is supposed to be the one that does like the most smacking, the most like uh, damage, and this guy should be the absolute toughest, like an absolute tank of an orc in general. As, if you don't know Space Knight, Quick Headtaker once faced against this guy in combat, and with Dwarf Gouger, he tried to aim like for the weakest part of his armor, which is in Gorfang's groin, and it did not even dent that armor piece. It's like that meme, Quick Headtaker. 
Why won't you die, die? Poor Fang Rat got nano machines, rat boy. <laughs> exactly. And if I recall, not only does he have his special armor, he also has a sword that I forget the properties, but I think it gives him regen. Maybe I forget. But he wasn't even using his sword. He was just using the the leg of a dwarven statue as a makeshift club against Queek because he didn't even think that he needed his sword against the guy. Wow. Yeah, so that shows you what kind of level this guy is on. All right, so moving on to the next uh, few legendary lord options, which, by the way, I'm not putting any goblins on here because we already had two DLCs where there were goblin legendary lords. Let this be an orc legendary lord in this one, especially to go with the theme of just pure brutal beating up against corn and the ogres. All right, so the next one I'm thinking about is Morglum Next Snapper, a black orc in the uh, Darklands who is uh, very famous for defending against a Bretonian Crusade, and he's the one that flung the phrase, the ace is green. This guy's got a wild card here. There's actually two characters. Their names are Grumlock and Gazbag, who are actually legendary characters for the Warhammer Online by Mythic Entertainment that was owned by EA. This is actually a big orc war boss with the Goblin Shoblin best friend that sits on his shoulder there and this one actually means that you have a melee character that can also do magic however mind you this is kind of a stretch as i believe that this guy is either owned or is not going to be allowed by games workshop or ea since this guy was created specifically for warhammer online back in like what 2008 wait is warhammer online that world of warcraft version of warhammer yeah the one that failed all right so moving on to potential legendary heroes there's really like two options i was thinking about one could be Snagla Grobspit, who is the most famous forest goblin, who actually uh, haunts the Drakwald with his goblin army. But the whole point about Snagla Grobspit is that he is the best when it comes to ambushing guerrilla warfare tactics against the Empire Beastman or whoever else comes into his part of the forest. And again, like I can understand if people want to have him as the legendary lord, but honestly, I just wanted an orc legendary lord. Now, the second uh, option for legendary hero is the one that I personally want, and that is Borgut Face Beater. He is a legendary black orc, uh, I guess, lieutenant, because he's actually the right-hand man of Gringor himself. And I can imagine it just like a mini version of Gringor, really. Because if I recall, I think he rose to fame in Gringor's army when Gringor was going to help it, and he was phasing against tons of monsters, and they were, like, flooding the, the caverns with rat ogres. And Borgut caught Gringor's eye when he was really headbutting rat ogres to death. Headbutting rat ogres? Wow, what a man. Exactly. What an orc, you mean? I mean, what an orc. <laughs> all right, so moving on to lore types, there are a bunch on here that I don't think I even added on to the list, but it's all about varieties, really. Although when it comes to unique stuff, one thing I was thinking about is either like Savage Orc War Boss or maybe Savage Orc Great Shaman being like two options right there. It's your brothers, bro, dude. It's your brothers. <laughs> Thanks. I don't know if they'll be as dancing as much as Wurzak, but it'll still be pretty cool, as well as adding more options just for a Savage Orc themed army, really. So that could be like one option where they could maybe have like Boar and uh, Wyvern mount options wielding the great uh, Wa lore, or maybe just being a regular Savage Orc war boss, whichever way. Another option for lore is being the Orc Great Shaman, which is actually on the tabletop that we still don't have in game. So if you want to do like a basic Orc Great Shaman, we can go with that one there. Another one being maybe the Black Orc war boss, although I'm not sure how much more like how different it'll be from the standard orc war boss but it's just awesome to have varieties and the unique looking factors of it yeah like i said there are tons of other lord options on there like say the uh goblin war boss instead of the night goblin war boss and i'm sure there are a few others i'm forgetting about or maybe a forest goblin great shaman being another option but again, it depends like what CA wants to do. But I personally would like the Savage Orc War Boss to add a like one who's not as tanky but does a ton of damage, being a pure DPS glass cannon guy. Now, moving on to hero options, there are a few stuff that I came by, but again, it's all about varieties, really, and I'm not sure they'll be able to do all of them in this DLC. One of the ones that I personally want is the Savage Orc Big Boss. This being a berserk, almost naked guy, flinging his axe around and just being completely crazy. Maybe having like four and hopefully wyvern mount options for this guy here. Hey, more buddies for Warzag, or should I say you? All right, so another one that could be a potential hero is the Forest Goblin Shaman if we don't get the Lord status, which might be cool as perhaps they could have the Lord of the Low Wall or something completely unique as the Forest Goblins, they do worship Gork and Mork. They have a third god that they worship more being the Spider God. All right, so going on to units, again, these are, this is all speculation. Nothing is going to be certain. One thing that uh, I in the community thought about is like, what about Snoplings as a very low tier basic chaff unit similar to like Nerdlings or Skaven Slaves? 
units. The next one could be a unique Savage Orc unit, although it's not entirely sure how it'll work in game, is one called the Savage Orc Big Stabo, which is really two guys that carry a big ass spear to just point stick at monsters or big units. Or we could do the other alternative option, just add Savage Orc with spears and that'll do the job just fine, I think. All right, so next one that's still not in the game, but could be a simple thing to add is the Goblin Spear Chucka to add an early game artillery unit with anti-large and maybe armor piercing potential. Or that could be a free OC unit if it's as similar to the bolt thrower. Will it move faster because it's small? Uh, I don't really know. When it comes to artillery like this, I think it, it's the same all around like that. Well, speaking of artillery unit that could move fast and actually handle itself, moving on to the next one that is the Squig Gaba. Imagine just a larger than usual squig that is then loaded up with tiny squigs in its mouth and then spits it out like artillery piece. This could be like a mid to late game option where it's a much better artillery piece than the rock lava because this thing can move fast, deal damage when shooting, and be okay in melee. All right, moving on to the next one as we continue the squig theme, as there's some stuff missing, is the mangler squids. Now this here is like some larger than usual squigs that are chained up together and just run around like crazy circles just going mad and tearing anything to shreds like a whirlwind of chains and teeth. I'm sure it'll be kind of hard to add this kind of thing in game, but again, we have the fanatics, we have the doom seekers, tons of chain whirling stuff in here. So if they can add this, that would be pretty awesome. I can imagine these guys also being armor piercing with how big they are as well, as well as to add a somewhat mid to late tier unit. Now the final thing, as we're missing yet another squig, is the colossal squig. Now this thing could be like a huge, not as tough as say the rolled eye for but be really, really fast and do a crap ton of armor piercing damage. It's like the Empire making fun of a little squig, and then you see the Colossal Squig, they're like, we're gonna need a lot of sticks to pop pop this bubble. Marienburg land ship, not a problem. <laughs> well, can you actually shoot it while it's hopping around like a bunny? Wait, it could still run fast and jump around like other squigs, even though it's twice the size of a normal squig? But yeah, it still moves around like a bouncing ball like usual squigs. That's how it is with any squig, really. But how big is it, Raw Dude? Hmm, not Dreadsaurian big, definitely not that. Like Stonehorn or maybe a little under Arachnarch Spider is my guess. Like still single entity size of it, but not as tall as a giant. Imagine a colossal squig that can blow up. Oh boy, that would be something, although I'm not sure if it's really worth it is spending that much money for one unit like that. There's a reason why the bullet corpse is just tier two. Or I have another idea, why not add a armored colossal squig? Just give the colossal squig some armor. I was going to mention that, maybe that could be a potential regiment renowned unit for the Colossal Squig. All right, so final unit here, and this is the one I recently added, is the Arachnarch Spider with a Web Flinger. So imagine like a Arachnarch Spider, but a semi-artillery unit with it too. But not catapult, but more like anti-infantry stuff to slow down and cause damage to them while it still moves around or even gets in combat. Now let's talk about the FLC. So we're really just adding more stuff to either of corn ogres or green skins. Like especially when it comes to orcs, they could add a ton of unit varieties. And one that I personally want is black orcs with shield CA. Please add that in, it's been way too long. Can you imagine how devastating Grimgor would be with a solid black orc shield wall line? Give her the dwarf shield walls. Imagine you put that for the black orcs. Oh boy, maybe not as defensive, but almost. Also, let's see, adding more mount options to the green skins, like adding the orc or chariots for green skin lords, as well as chariots for goblins, and both hero and lord type. How about adding the squig mount for the night goblin shaman? I'm so sick of that guy always being on foot. He's like, boy, slow down. I don't have a mount option. Me bloody feet hurt. <laughs> oh, let's see. How about adding feral wyverns as a regular unit, not just a wah thing? Because they are a lot more harder to get than I thought. I remember wanting that ever since I saw the Bow Blackfire Pass like alpha footage back in 2015 or 2016. And that trailer alone is the main reason I became interested in Warhammer Fantasy. Similar to how I got into 40k with Dawn of War. And also missing unit variant, which you can see here that I took from a Great Book of Grudges uh, screenshot right here. You can just see how much there is, but it's not really, uh... you can't really charge for that unless, as Great Book of Grudges pointed out, unless the Greenskins actually went through a Champions of Chaos style DLC, which is what I was hoping for. But what? Whatever. All right, so that's the speculation for this new DLC of Corn, Ogres, and Greenskins. Any thoughts, Spade Slight? Yeah, it's looking good for Corn, Ogres, and Greenskins. Which, by the way, if besides Zinch, Corn is still my favorite Chaos God, especially with the Greenskins. 
Ogres are okay for me. I mean, the ogre monsters are cool, but they really need some help. Especially in campaign with almost every aspect of it. And you remember Bones of the Gate being centered around the Throne of Chaos? Yeah. Didn't you mention something about the Challenge Stone last time? Yeah, that's a specific location where ogres and chaos warriors constantly battle in order to have that territory. What if that could be the story for this DLC? I mean, yeah, especially if there's a big fight. Although recently I've seen a pattern with CA DLCs where there isn't really a story tying the DLC together like it used to be. Even with Thrones of Decay, you don't really see much of a story when it came to Tamarkan, Malachi, and Elsef. Anyways, that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this speculation video about the third DLC for Warhammer 3. If you liked it, don't forget to subscribe Slap the bell icon, like the video, share it with your friends, and thank you, Roger, for once again joining me in this speculation video. My pleasure, Space Knight, and hopefully CA continues to do a good job with these DLCs after Thrones of the Decay. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time. Bye!